Our skin, also called the integument, is an elastic, durable covering protecting our body and is our largest organ. If the skin of an average-sized adult were spread out flat, it would cover an area of approximately two square meters and weigh about 4.5 kilograms, the size and weight of a medium-sized rug. Skin tissue grows faster than any other organ tissue and is constantly renewing itself by growing new skin cells and sloughing off old ones. This includes our hair, finger and toenails, which are composed of the same type of cells as our skin, and, along with our skin and glands, make up the integumentary system. The integumentary system consists of two components, the skin, called the cutaneous membrane, and accessory structures, which include hair, nails, sudoriferous, or sweat glands, and sebaceous, or oil glands. We will examine these components one at a time. The skin's functions include protecting the body from bacterial invasion and from drying out, regulating body temperature, providing sensory reception, synthesizing vitamin D, excreting waste products, and serving as a reservoir for blood and nutrients. The cutaneous membrane consists of an upper layer called the epidermis, an underlying or basement layer called the dermis, and connective tissue called the subcutaneous or hypocutaneous layer. The epidermis is made up of five layers called strata. The stratum corneum, stratum lucidum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, and the stratum basale. It is firmly attached to the underlying dermis by a membrane called the basement membrane. Accessory structures belonging to the integumentary system include hair, sebaceous and sudoriferous glands, and nails. There are approximately five million hairs on our body. The fine, soft hair that covers our limbs and most of our body is called vellus hair. The thicker, stiffer hair that covers our head, including eyebrows, beards, and mustaches, is called terminal hair. The only totally hairless areas on our bodies are our palms, soles, and lips. Hair grows out of a structure called a follicle, Follicles extend into the dermis and even the hypodermis, surrounded by a thin layer of epidermal cells. Stem cells divide at the bottom of the follicle, and as these cells become keratinized, they form a hair shaft inside the follicle. Above our skin surface, hair consists of dead, keratinized cells. Only the root of the hair inside the follicle is alive. A sensory nerve fiber connected to the base of each hair follicle enables us to feel the movement of a single hair. This contributes to our skin's sensitiveness to touch and temperature. Each follicle also possesses a tiny muscle that can contract in response to emotions such as fear or rage, or in response to cold, which pulls hair erect and causes what we call goosebumps on the surface of our skin. On average, 100,000 hairs grow on our heads at the rate of about 1.3 centimeters per month. These hairs generally live about three to four years, and in some people, would grow to nearly two meters long if left uncut. An adult loses about 100 of these hairs each day. Most of them grow back, 
except for men going bald. Many men after the age of 40 find their hair receding on the top of their skulls and some men become totally bald. This is caused by changes in the level of sex hormones in males and is called male pattern baldness. Your surgeon will perform a skin graft procedure to repair badly damaged or missing skin by transplanting healthy skin to the site of the damaged skin. Your skin has three main layers, the epidermis, the dermis, and the hypodermis or subcutaneous layer containing fat, blood vessels, and nerves. Your skin is your body's largest organ. It serves several major functions, including physically covering your body, protecting the inside of your body, regulating your body temperature, and providing you with your sense of touch. In some cases, your skin can become so damaged that it will not heal properly. Your doctor may recommend a skin graft procedure to repair many skin conditions, including a wound that doesn't heal, a severe burn, skin ulcer, skin biopsy, a large surgical wound, or skin infection. Before your procedure, you will be given either general or local anesthesia. If your surgeon is using your own healthy skin, called an autograft, he or she may create a split thickness skin graft or a full thickness skin graft, depending on the depth of skin your graft needs to cover. After cleaning the area of healthy skin, called the donor site, your surgeon will use an instrument called a dermatome to remove very thin slices of your skin, creating a split thickness skin graft. For full thickness skin grafts, your surgeon will use a scalpel to remove all the layers of skin at the donor site. Once your surgeon determines the type of skin graft you will need, he or she will clean the area of damaged skin and cut out any dead or unhealthy tissue. Your surgeon will place the skin graft on the wound site and use stitches to keep it in place. Then your surgeon will apply ointment to the graft and cover it with gauze. Finally, your surgeon may use bandages to secure the graft and apply pressure as the graft adheres to the surrounding skin. The skin is the largest organ of the body. It serves many important functions, including protecting the body from infection and regulating body temperature in fluids. The skin is primarily composed of three layers. The epidermis is the outer layer of the skin and contains basal and squamous cells. Melanocytes are also found in the epidermis. These are cells that contain pigment, which allows the skin to tan and which also protect the deeper layers of the skin from the effects of UV sunlight exposure. The dermis, which lies below the epidermis, contains blood vessels, connective tissue, hair follicles, and sweat glands. The subcutaneous layer, which is the deepest layer of skin, contains fat cells and collagen. Skin cancer occurs when there is an uncontrollable growth of abnormal cells in a layer of the skin. There are three common forms of skin cancer that are distinguished by the types of cells affected. Basal cell carcinoma is the most common form of skin cancer. This type of skin cancer does not typically spread, but does require treatment. Basal cell carcinomas most often develop in the areas of the skin exposed to the sun. Squamous cell carcinomas develop in the middle layer of the epidermis. This type of cancer can spread and can be life-threatening if not treated appropriately. Abnormal growths of melanocytes, called malignant melanomas, are the most aggressive form of skin cancer. Melanomas can spread quickly to other parts of the body and to organs. This type of skin cancer can be fatal if not detected and treated early. 
people with fair skin are at increased risk for developing this form of cancer increased sun exposure and a history of sunburns increase the risk for developing skin cancer The phyllosebaceous unit, or PSU, of the skin consists of the sebaceous gland and the hair follicle. The sebaceous gland secretes an oily substance called sebum, which protects the hair and skin. Overproduction of sebum is related to the disease called acne, or commonly pimples. Sebum may collect excessively as a result of poor hygiene, genetic predisposition, or accelerated glandular activity especially during adolescence. During an acne breakout, the pore of the hair follicle is plugged by a mixture of sebum and cells that line the hair follicle. The trapped sebum allows bacteria to grow in the plugged follicles. This forms the primary acne lesion called a comedo. There are two types of comedo, whiteheads and blackheads. When the sebum and bacteria stay below the skin surface, a whitehead is formed. A blackhead occurs when the trapped sebum and bacteria partially open to the surface and turn black due to melanin, the skin's pigment. Commonly involved areas are the face, neck, chest, shoulders, and upper back. Treatment includes keratolytics, retinoids, antibiotics, hormone therapy, spironolactone for women, isoretinoin in severe cases.